All of my stones have been scattered all over the bench here. These stones here were from the Mediterranean Sea. My children picked them up about five years ago. <laughs> they took them with them and we brought them here to Australia. So we didn't pay any import tax. We snuck them through customs, just letting you know. <laughs> but the reason they're on the table, guys, I've got COVID. I've got COVID, I'm feeling a little bit under the weather. I'm just mucking around here, but you probably hear it in my voice. We're here for this watch. One of my viewers, Mel Jones, purchased this particular watch. It's called the Van Banner Parking Master. He bought it brand new and it never got delivered. It never arrived. So he contacted the company and said to them, look, the watch is not here. It's been seven weeks. So they sent him another watch. Now, several weeks later, the new watch arrived as well as the original purchase. So he ended up with two watches. So he contacted Van Banner and said, look, the original one came as well. What do you want me to do? I'll send it back to you guys. And Van Banner said, look, don't worry about sending it back. Just forward it on to one of the YouTube reviewers there in Australia. So Mal reached out to me and said, Pete, do you want to have a look at this watch? It's pretty cool. It's, it's pretty fun. I said, mate, send it down. So here it is. It's called the Van Banner Parking Master, an unusual piece. A very, I think the name itself sort of alludes to having a bit more fun than sort of taking the watch too seriously. And I don't mind certain aspects of the watch, but it isn't without its flaws as well. So, and I'll share that in the review. So first and foremost, let's get stuck into its specs. I measure the case diameter coming in at 40 millimeters exactly. The case height comes in at 13.7 mil. We have a lug to lug distance of 47.8 and a lug width of 20 mil. Now that crown comes in at 6.8 millimeters. As you can see, it's signed and loom filled. And the total weight of the watch comes in at 158 grams, sized to my 18 centimeter wrist. On the wrist, the watch sits quite nice. As you can see, the lug to lug distance of 47.8 does not overhang, albeit it does have male end links. And those end links actually extend that distance to 53.4, so something to mention. The height itself, it's quite, it's quite a tricky height because although it is 13.7, it sits nice. The fact that the case tapers down, it's, it's quite uh, deceiving. It, does, it, it doesn't really show its height, which is quite nice. I like that about the watch. Now, if you look at the bracelet, the bracelet is quite aggressive and sharp. It tapers down to the actual clasp. It is a comfortable experience, but for me personally, I've had a few little quirks that I want to share with some niggles that I've, I've tried to sort of sort out with this particular timepiece. Like I mentioned, the finishing is very raw. It's, uh, it's very industrial. There's no finesse. It's sharp, sharp edges everywhere on this particular unit, which I like, but it's also sharp. When I mean sharp, like you could probably cut yourself on some of those edges. They're razor, razor sharp. So just keep that in mind. The bracelet itself is also sharp, very aggressive edges. It features screw pins on one side as well as the other side. So you need two screwdrivers and that's when being one of my nickels trying to actually adjust the bracelet. The fact that they do have screw pins is good, secure, but it is a bit difficult to, to change out. And I think that's got to do with tolerance. As far as the milled swivel, very nice. Press clasp, fold over as you can see, as well as twin triggers. Just there, just to release. It also features six micro adjustments and I've pretty much not moved it all week. It's been sitting on the second one and it's been really comfortable as far as size. Now the bezel on the watch is a 120 click unidirectional. It's a ceramic insert as well as loom filled and I'll show you the action. Very nice, very nice sound as well as clicking action. Very positive. There's hardly any back play and the accuracy is spot on. So. The, the bezel has surprised me. I, not only do I like its knurling, the fact that it's aggressive and it matches that crown, but I like its action. I think it's, it's done very, very well. And it's probably one of those bezels that's designed to be used. That's why they call this the parking meter. If you're, let's say you park your car and you've got 30 minutes left on the parking meter. Well, see the 30 minute mark? You'd place it on your minute hand and in 30 minutes, when you start getting into the orange zone, you better start heading back to your car. 
when it gets into the red, you're in trouble. <laughs> you know, obviously when it hits that marker, you know that you've basically run out of 30 minutes and so forth. So it's, it's been designed to be used to, to count down, to time things, past the cooking, an egg, a pizza in the oven, what have you. But the actual action, very, very nice. There you go. Now the movement of the watch is a Miyota 9039, no date. And if you look at that crown, the crown is situated between the three and the four o'clock. So it's slightly off center. Same knurling as featured on this actual bezel, which I really like, the aggressiveness of it. We'll unscrew it, pops out, single click. We hack the movement and we can adjust the time. There you go, lock that in. Standard hand winding experience from a Miyota as you'd expect. And the, look, the latch down experience has been a mixed bag on this. Sometimes it latches on, sometimes it doesn't. So you, you've pretty much got to go slightly backwards to find the thread and then actually latch it on. So like now I'll try it, yeah, it, it won't go. So if I go backwards, there it goes. But once it does latch on, it's buttery smooth and you've got 200 meters of water resistance. Now I think the hero of this watch is the Loom. The watch features C3 Super Luminova as well as BGW9. If you notice that red and orange section on that bezel, that's also a loom filled. So quite an interesting effect coming in from a, a daylight environment into an inside a house or inside a dark room. A very legible experience, really easy to read. So as far as the loom is concerned, well done. Now the sapphire crystal is a single dome sapphire. As you can see, there's a little bit of distortion at extreme angles. It's got AR coating on the underside as well as the top, but it also features a sapphire crystal on the exhibition case back. They've got their logo as well as having a little bit of fun. But in saying that, it's covering up that Miyota. Not that there's anything special, it's not decorated. On the time grapher, this has been gaining about five and a half, five seconds a day, which is pretty decent. Now, I did mention there are some negatives of the watch or things that I dislike for me personally. And one of them is, if you look at the end links, they're solid, they've got quick release. That's a great feature. However, being such a low profile, you'll notice that those, those quick release pins, they actually dig into my skin. It's been something that it's been bugging me and the only way out of it is to basically remove that and put a, a standard spring bar, I suppose. But yeah, that's one of the things that's been bugging me throughout the week. The end links themselves, like I said, they are positive. They are uh, male and they do extend that lug to lug distance more than the 47.8. In fact, that comes out to 53.4 mil. So if you've got smaller wrists, that might be a bit of an issue. The screw pins, like I mentioned before, they are a little bit difficult to remove. Although I do like the fact that they have included screw pins, they're very secure, but yeah, it is a bit awkward to get out, obviously because of the tolerances. And the fact that this this is very sharp, it's very, it's very, very sharp. Every, I love the bezel, I love the crown, but you've just got to be careful. You can actually you can actually cut yourself on some of these corners. You really can. So I think the look is nice. I like the aggressiveness and I like the, the raw industrial feel of this but maybe just a little bit of a bevel, just there, <laughs> maybe would have just taken off that edge, but that's me. Now, as far as the positives of the watch, I like, like I just mentioned, I do like its raw feel. I like what they've done, the industrial sort of feel of that. Love the bezel, love the crown, love the knurling, love the action. Loom is fantastic. It's a decent watch, it's a fun watch. Like I said, it's not meant to be taken seriously. In fact, I've matched it up with different types of straps. Obviously, you can match red on red, match red on red just to sort of get a bit of accents happening there. Even green works, yeah, obviously without loom and even white. So it's a fun watch, it's a fun sort of a summary watch to use. That just, those accents just bring a little bit of fun to the actual unit. So I wanted to share it. This is for Mel Jones's sake. Like I said, he bought two, well he bought one, they sent him two. He sent it to me to have a look at. So although it is sold out guys, I believe they will be making a version three. Let me know your thoughts of the watch, guys, what you think. A retro looking piece. Again, not to be taken serious. Thank you for watching, guys. Thank you, Mel, for sending this watch out for us to have a look at. Enjoy yours, guys. Let me know your comments in the comment section, and we'll see you all in the next video.